G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So last week I posted the first video of the series in my full fish room tour. If you haven't seen that video yet, you can watch it right here. However, obviously this is going to be part two of that series. So let's get straight into it with the second part of my full fish room tour. I hope you enjoy it. So this tank is my Judochromus transcriptus gombi tank. Uh, there's four fish in this tank and they're almost getting to their full adult size. Um, and you can see they, they're still, they look quite small in the tank and that is because this species of Judochromus are the smallest species um, in the world. We're, with the females growing uh, to seven centimeters at full length and the males being just a tad smaller than that um, at full maturity. So we've gone from the Reganis in that tank in this tank here, the largest jewelry in the world, to the next tank which has got the smallest jewelries in the world. And I just absolutely love these, these, uh, these Transcriptus Gombies. Um, the markings on them are really striking and uh, they're, they're called, so called the Mask Jewelry. So when I recorded part one last week, I actually had um, one dominant fish in this tank that was pretty much beating up the other three Julies in this tank. And in the last day or two, uh, that, that dominant fish, which is at the bottom there, you can see it's quite large, I'm assuming that's the female. And you can see she's accepted that other fish, the smaller fish there. So I'm assuming that is the male. Because again, like the Reganis, uh, the Judochromus transcriptus gombi, the female is larger than the male. And it's only in the last two days that she's accepted that male to be near her. Like I said, she was bashing the other three fish in this tank, because it's a total of four fish in this tank. And uh, now she's accepted that little guy. So um, I'm quite lucky that she's accepted him, said that she's accepted him. I've had him for about a month and a half. And yeah, as I said, only in the last two days that she accepted him, um, tolerated him near her and near her caves. So I'm really, really stoked about that. Hopefully, uh, considering that she's pretty much almost full, fully grown, I might have fry in the coming weeks from this pair. Like I said in last week's video about Judochromus, um, I could take the pair out and move them to a smaller tank. And I, you know, with the Reganis, I'm possibly going to keep them in the two foot cube in the, in, the, in the tank that they're in currently because they are the largest Judochromus species in the world. However, with the Transcriptus being the smallest, I might move them to a smaller tank to free up this tank for other species of cichlids. So we'll see how they go. I mean, the pairs just formed. I really don't like moving bonded pairs uh, around because it will, can break the bond. But um, we'll see how they go after a while, after a few months, if they're, they're spawning really well. Um, I might take the risk if I've got enough fry to, to move them um, and see how, they, see how they go with the move into a smaller tank. But um, I really don't like risking it. You can see them swimming around there. They're a real good pair. Uh, real, the bond is really strengthening. Um, just, just amazing. But yeah, again, like I said in last week's video with, um, with the, the Judochromus regani, it's always best to leave some fish in the tank with them to act as dither fish so the aggression is spread out amongst all the fish in the fish tank rather than moving the pair by themselves and then the female bashing the male or vice versa. Over in the Judochromis world it's more than likely the female is going to bash the male. But yeah, that's my Judochromis transcriptus gombi tank. So guys, these are my Alto Lamprologus calvus. This is the black variety, and they're pretty much my pride and joy in this entire fish room. I absolutely love these guys. You can see the males in the center there, his head is facing forward. Female's just behind him to the right, and she's a lot darker at the moment. These guys are very peaceful fish, and they've been very, very, um, not, not as skittish, not as shy as my other calvers, which you'll see in a moment. Uh, these, this pair have always been out, they never hide. Um, they come to the front of the tank when I'm about to feed them and yeah they've been really peaceful they get along really well now when i was filming footage for this video that you're watching right now um, i had shot some footage of these guys 
and uh, for this for this video, and I'll insert some of that footage here. And that that had just happened. They had just happened to have a fight about an hour earlier, and I'd never seen them fight like this before. They have never fought before. They'll have the peaceful uh, push and shove, you know, where like the male will kind of like push the female. Um, the side of her body and they'll display to each other and then that'll be it um, But this was like locking jaws tearing off shreds off each other Tearing fins. Uh, it was really really odd. I don't know what triggered it uh, Although I did do a water change on the tank uh, earlier that morning, but These guys obviously have had water changes before and that's never occurred before so I'm still a little bit confused as to what happened what triggered that fight um, I thought maybe he didn't pay the bills on time or he said something about her weight uh, because she is getting quite large. So no, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened, but yeah, they 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 um, had a pretty big bad fight. Female still recovering. You can see uh, her fin there is um, a little bit torn. Well, he, he's taken a bit of a chunk out of it, but they are healing. They are recovering. The, these guys are stunning-looking fish. They've, they're they're pushing about three inches. Um, males um, pretty much three inches. Females maybe two inches two and a half um, and they got quite large teeth you know these guys are designed as ambush predators uh, they hunt fry in Lake Tanganyika and um, their slim profile allows them to get into little nooks and crannies and crevices in the, in the lake amongst the rocks to to get fry uh, so you know even though they're a peaceful uh, cichlid they are designed purely for predation um, they are a pretty uh, pretty top predator in the in the lake they're very, very slow growing cichlids. Um, they take quite a few years to get to this size. I was fortunate enough to acquire an adult pair. They were sold to me as an adult pair, not as a breeding pair. So I don't know if um, they are gonna be a true breeding pair, but I hope they will be because I would absolutely love to breed these cichlids. Uh, they are a challenging fish to breed. Uh, I've never bred calvus. Uh, so it would be a first for me if I do succeed in breeding them, but yeah, I really would out of all the fish I've got these are the guys I really love to breed So yeah, uh, that's my Alto Lamprologus black calvus tank Okay guys, so this is my Alto Lamprologus calvus white tank. So the white variety of calvus It's the last tank on the middle row in my fish room and it sits directly next to the black calvus fish tank both calvus tanks can see each other. I've purposely done that so the white calvus can feel a bit more comfortable in this tank. So like I said about the black calvus, um, them being pretty, pretty used to me and they're not shy, they're not skittish, these white calvus are very skittish. They're the complete opposite of my black calvus. I don't know if that's a common trait amongst white calvus or just this pair, but they are very, very skittish and it's only now I've owned, again, I've owned these guys as well it's since since November this uh, last year, 2019, and they're only now starting to really swim around the tank. Um, I did have them obviously in a quarantine tank for a period of time, and then I moved them into this tank, and they've they've obviously been way more comfortable in this tank because this tank has rocks and gravel, um, as opposed to just being bare bottom with a couple of shells. So they're much more comfortable in this tank. And um, it's only now, what's this, it's um, the very start of February 2020, so pretty much almost, well, basically three months to really, for them to start to feel comfortable uh, uh, and swim around um, in the tank, which is surprising and a little bit disappointing because I absolutely love the, the shape of Calvus. It's a beautiful predator looking shape, you know, they, they look like they're built to absolutely um, annihilate all other fish that are in the tank but they are again a peaceful fish and um, they, they, they don't fight with um, many other cichlids so it's, it's a bit of a shame that I don't get to see these guys as often as the black uh, calvus. This is the first time I've been able to see the female out in the open since I've owned these guys. And also you might notice there's some guppies in this tank those guys play two roles one, they're to the fish, obviously bringing the calvus out of their shells, literally making the white calvus feel a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more safe in the aquarium. They see other fish swimming around, they will feel more comfortable and they will come out and swim around as well. The second benefit that the guppies are providing to these calvus is live food. 
We've got two large females in here. They've been in here for a few months and they've had several generations of fry hatch in this tank. There's no males in this tank, but female guppies can stay fertile for, for months, up to 10 months, I believe, um, without males in, with them. So they provided a live food source for these calvers, which is obviously great food for the calvers um, and hopefully to get into breeding condition because once again, like the black calvers, I'd love to breed these guys. I'd love to breed calvers in general. Never done it before and I'd be happy to breed either of these. Although I do like the black calvers a little bit more um, because they're, they're such, they're so much more um, striking with the contrast. And basically the difference between white and black calvers, it is hard to tell the difference because black calvers can lighten up and white calvers can darken up. Uh, so you don't want to put black calvers with white calvers because you will, you'll find it very difficult to tell them apart. Um, but white calvers obviously have the ability to go lighter than black calvers can and black calvers have the ability to get darker than white calvers ever could. So that's how you pretty much tell the difference. Other than that, they look exactly the same. But make sure you do not mix calvers together. Keep your black calvers by themselves and your white calvers by themselves. But yeah, that's my uh, Alto Lampologus white calvers tank. So there you have it guys, part two of my full fish room tour. Just a quick side note though, I started stocking the new tanks with fish and there are some beautiful and interesting selections in there. So if you aren't subscribed to my channel yet, be sure to do so because I don't want you to miss out on seeing what I've done with these tanks. However, next week we're going to be doing part three of my full fish room tour where I discuss what's in the top row of tanks. So if you did like this video, please hit the like button and comment on it. I'd really appreciate it and it would help me out. Anyway guys, I'd wrap this one up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in part three of my full fish room tour next week. See yous.